example, if you are uh, basically local government or the local province is growing, that is determined by the economic growth. Then only you can grow the pro politically. undertaking there you can mention the positives as you have to value it you have to write the positive negative and then the way forward say uh, in 2018 they have asked about the estimate committee so homework for you is to, we have covered for the PAC you need to cover estimate committee and the committee on the public undertaking and do cover the chapter relating to the parliamentary committees this way you can cover your static portion with the crunch topics now the current context that the editorial mentions that the panel the pac has picked up the five subjects suo moto it will examine some of the reforms in the banking and the insurance sector it will review the implementation of the centrally sponsored welfare schemes it will also see into the energy sector it will also review the regulatory bodies established by the acts of the parliament and levy and regulation of the fees tariffs user charges as uh, recently the sebi chairman hindenburg case book case was uh, in the news that is why the review of the regulatory bodies will be taken by the pc and let the report comes we will further analyze what are the outcomes of the pc report if it will be ta uh, taken in the newspaper later we will obviously read that and till now you need to cover the static portion and you can obviously use these examples as well like how PAC plays the role in the bringing the reforms in the respective sectors and how it is able to bring the accountability how it is able to bring the accountability on the regulatory bodies as well by the review I hope it is clear to you because it can take the suo moto review Now the next editorial, that is the parallels of the decentralization with the Chinese characteristics. Firstly, I want to say this editorial deeply talks about the changes in the China. You need to calmly understand first whatever is written in the editorial. In the end, I will try to convey also like how can use this knowledge in the respective papers. But firstly, uh, as the editorial explains deeply, you need to first understand what are the changes that happen with the decentralization. Even before that, I want to discuss the difference between the Indian federalism and the Chinese federalism. Firstly, you need to understand, although there is a decentralization in China, as the local governments are given the power to decide on the economic or the uh, basically political policies, but you need to understand, actually, there is no federalism in the China. As uh, the, the powers of the states are not protected by the constitution, you need to understand the important feature of the federalism is the powers of the state or the local governments cannot be changed by the central government. It means the rigid constitution and the written constitution is the important feature of the federalism. And in the prelims examination, they have already tested what could be the features of the federalism. Multiple times they have asked it. So the clarity should be there. What is federalism? The division of the powers between the state and the center is basically federalism. And here the division of power must be done by the our uh, constitution because constitution amendment cannot be done just unilaterally here the consent of the state government is also required in india like if any of the federal feature of the constitution has to be changed then there is a need of at least 50 percent of the state's uh, government's consent to amend the constitution it means the written constitution, rigid constitution is the important feature of the federalism. After that, there is a need of independent judiciary because independent judiciary can uh, decide with the independent unbiased way whenever there is a dispute between the central and the state government. And in our India, this is the original jurisdiction of the uh, Supreme Court where the central and state uh, government's disputes are being taken under Article 131. You need to memorize the federal features in this way. 
like in india there is a schedule 7 that divides the uh, list into three parts that union list state list and the concurrent list on the union list only the basically central government can decide in the state list uh, state list uh, state governments can make a law and there is a concurrent list there where both can make the law and there is one residuary powers that are given to the union government and the central government only so this is the basic part you need to cover the federalism chapter but here in this editorial we will discuss the effects of the decentralization in china although you have understood one thing we cannot call it china as a federal country because the powers of the local government and the state government are not being protected by the constitution but here the effect of the decentralization how initially it helped the chinese economy to grow and thereafter how it went uh, how it is uh, slowing down and how it is going down we will discuss all this what are the uh, basically lacunas in their policy making and it should be learned by the india to formulate its uh, economic policies now in india and China, if we compare the decentralization in India, city level governments only spend around 3% of the total government spending. Whereas the China, here is around 51% of the government spending in the China is at the sub-provincial levels. Although this is the data you can use in the GS2 in the local self-government where you want to show because anything can be shown in the positive and the negative way. Although later we will discuss what happened negatively in the China due to all this. But yes, certainly you can use this data in the GS2 local self-government. Like how in the China, as the power to spend more was given to the sub-provincial levels, that is local governments, that has led the Chinese economy to grow. It means this kind of sub uh, model can be adopted by India at least to some extent. For example, our local governments are spending only 3%. As the in China, the important subjects like pension and insurance, all these are given to the local governments. But in India, these are the union subjects or the national subjects. This is the difference between China and India. And uh, uh, there is a topic in the GS2 that talks about the constitutional comparison between the countries. There also some of the question could come comparing China and India and you can use this point. After this, the economic growth was an important determinant of the local leaders' political prospects as uh, which of the leader will grow that was uh, dependent on their economic growth. For example, if you are uh, basically local government or the local province is growing, that is determined by the economic growth. Then only you can grow the pro politically. What happens with it? Basically, the local government started prioritizing the industrial construction over the provision of the public services. It means they have focused on the industrial construction more. What are the positive happenings with that? It means the industrial land was given at the deep discounts by the local government. Rather than they uh, focusing on the residential houses, they have given the industrial land at the deep discounts. After this, they have increased the regional economic growth and it, it, can, it has also acted as a future local tax revenues. It has said like with the industrial growth, there will be economic growth and it will also bring the revenues for the local government. Local governments attracted the investors with the attractive land rights. Firm accepted the offer and churned out as a course advantages was given to the firms. That is why there was increased in the supply. And you can use this in the GS3 to support the rural economy. Like if the question is saying how the rural economy can be increased, you need to justify like if there would be industrial development in the rural area, there will be two ways development. For example, if there is industrial development, that will lead to the increase in the basically jobs in the rural area. There will be increase in the income. There will be increase in the demand in the economy of the rural area. After this, the industrial development will also support the tax revenues of the local government. So it will help in the two ways.
now after this this editorial further talks the negative happenings in the china due to the decentralization or the over emphasis on the industrial development by the local governments what happens the investment led model lead to the over capacity it means there has been a over capacity over basically utilization of resources there is a over production of the uh, basically sectors and this led to the wasteful investment and the loss making entities are being operating in the china we will further analyze the negative consequences but still this edit editorial says although there were some negatives of the over decentralization by the local governments over emphasis on the industrial development that is over capacity but still the china was able to grow still although with that kind of economic decentralization as the central leadership permitted the local innovations why the china was still able to grow because the local governments were themselves to decide which of the policies will be suited to their local environment this way you can say in ever india also we need to bring the basically policies as per the local environment only like for example instead of planning commission that was a decentralized planning we have also brought the niti aayog in 2014 it means the decentralized planning or the decentralized decisions will definitely help the economies to grow after this it also says the geopolitical climate there in the world also supported the chinese exports because the foreign markets were ready to absorb the chinese ever increasing capacity as uh, in the past china was producing huge and that was absorbed by the foreign markets this is why the over capacity or the over production did not hurt the china in the past now further this editorial talks the car encounters a slope as the it was saying the policies of the china was like that Ch car has two accelerators to move further but it has no brakes finally it encounters a slope when when the xi jinping ha came to the power this model began to reach a tipping point and to substantiate it has given some data ndrc in 2014 has said the investments made in 2009 and 13 these are the wasteful and it has wasted around 6.9 trillion dollars it means the investment led model the over emphasis on the supply side economy that is pushing the producer to produce this kind of economy has led to the wasteful investment uh, this data can also be used in the classes i always discuss like instead of having just supply based economy that is supply based means pushing on the basis of producer and in the prelims as well they have already asked what is supply based economies you need to read about it uh, please google it try to understand it if you are not able to understand do mention in the comment section we will try to make up a video on the supply side and the demand side economies now coming back to the editorial as it is uh, pushing supply based economies only it means the supplier is being pushed to produce this led to the over investment and the wasteful investment and the desire for the self sufficiency has further resulted in them focusing on the specific product lines for example the drive to localize the entire supply chain for the semiconductors on the one side china was over producing it was creating over capacity due to the investment led model and due to the decentralized economy and with this they have produced produced huge and this led to the wasteful investment secondly the china was having a self sufficiency uh, policy in which it was creating the local supply chain for the products now further the economist report that the 30% of all industrial firms are making the losses in china in june 2024 further it also uh, highlights that the china chinese losses of the chinese loss or the instability in the economy can also be hindrance to the indian development in the future it means our neighboring country should be growing but you will understand like how the 
over development of the china has also become a national security threat for the countries for example it also says the another reason that the china is not has encountered a slope because other governments now see china's over capacity as a national security threat because china is finding the uh, basically foreign markets to sell their over produce products and they the basically over emphasis on this aspect now the trade wars was obviously seen between the china and us and this has been seen as a national security threat by the western countries this is why the basically we see the countering of the bri that is a belt road initiative the indo pacific approach has been made by the us and there are other some projects that are uh, trying to counter the chinese expansionist policy now the shortcomings in the bri has been discussed now we have discussed the china was producing over uh, capacity and it was uh, due to the over capacity it was trying to observe the more and more foreign markets to get those foreign markets it has entered into the bri that is belt road initiative through which the infrastructure will be developed uh, between the countries and the china will get access to those countries markets but still there are some shortcomings in the bri let's discuss that is z is in ping has planned to substitute western markets with increasing uh, domestic demand as the it has understood that the bri cannot support it because the foreign markets if are not providing the demand for the chinese products then where these uh, over produced products will be sold now it has to create the domestic demand like in india it is said that even during the covid 19 uh, we were able to have a stable growth why because there is a huge domestic demand but chinese uh, policies has never been as such to support the do, uh, domestic demand so they are not in the expertise of uh, creating the domestic demand because they have always focused on the supply based economies that is investment led model it means there is no enough uh, domestic demand in the chinese country and uh, in the foreign markets there is a the chinese products are seen as a national security threat and the bri countries they are not strong enough to create that much huge demand to observe those over capacity it means on the one side the china is not able to create the domestic demand it means it is the learning for the india to always focus on the domestic demand how the domestic demand can be created in the economy always that could be possible if we will work on the increasing the employment opportunities in india because if the people will have job there will be increase in the income they will create the demand after this we should also basically to uh, give them job we need to work on the skill development of the people skill development needs to be focused and for the skill development the education sector also needs to be supported and to decrease their out of pocket expenditure we need to support the health uh, sector as well so this way you can say we need to work on the demand side economies or the demand side policies also because the domestic demand is also important factor for the gdp growth but in china domestic demand cannot be created as much and the second policy of the china that is uh, creating the foreign markets through the bri that is belt road initiative is not helping much the china because the countries in the bri they are not able to generate that much huge demand now the conclusion is in short this editorial says the over capacity and the export orientation are baked into the chinese style decentralization this has reached its limits now uh, why it has reached its limits because the arrogant approach to the international relations the basically expansionist policies of the china has made a threat uh, to the other countries and they are not ready to use the chinese products for example during the covid 19 we have seen due to the galwan valley attack we have banned the chinese apps this is how the other countries are basically banning the chinese products 
for example we have seen the trade war between the us and the china this is how the chinese products are not accepted by the some of the asian countries and that too by the western countries and its approach for the self reliance has also been a threat like on one side china does not allow the imports but on the other side it is exporting huge this way economy does not work so uh you can just you have to decide whether you are supporting the globalization or not it means in india also we need to have a decentralization but to some extent only we need to have decentralization they where the localized uh, policies need to be promoted surely but we need uh, we should not overly emphasis on the investment led model although we need investment led model but we need to support it with the domestic demand we also should focus on the demand side policies that is we need to skill development of the people we need to create the jobs of the uh, for the people so that they can create a demand after this we need to uh, come into the basically healthy and the fruitful agreements with other countries so that the indian production the if india also reach the over capacity it will have good relationships with the other countries so that it can sell those products to the uh, foreign markets i hope the whole editorial is clear to you and this is clear to you like how it can be used in the gs2 like for example i have told about the examples can be used in the local self government example can be used in the federalism model and thereafter i have discussed about the gs3 like in gs3 if, uh, the question is asking about the factors for the growth do mention about the obviously investment led growth certainly help because the investment led growth one side it will give the tax revenue to the government second side it also creates the jobs to, uh, for the people and it uh, it will also increase the exports for the country but so on the second side we also need to work on the domestic demand how it can be done why increasing the jobs for the people and the skill development this is how you can write about the gs3 Uh, related this, and you can obviously use the Chinese uh, case study as a example in the GS three to show how the decentralization and the localized policies can help the uh, India to grow. But along with the, also you can use the particular example in the negative side. Like if we will not focus like China on the basically domestic demand. then our only focus on the investment led model will not help india to grow it will also lead to the losses for the indian firms as well in the future that happened in the china i hope the whole had to release really